Super Smash Bros. has a long history of cash bounties. Bounties for beating specific players in tournament matches, for finding glitches, and for speedrunning. Back in 2019, the largest bounty Smash had ever seen was $1,658.90, and it was paid out in full for what I consider to be one of the all-time greatest group achievements in all of speedrunning, a milestone nearly 20 years in the making, breaking the sub 3-minute barrier in the combined world record times of Super Smash Bros. Melee's 25 Break the Target stages. And get this, that entire payout and nearly a year's worth of effort from dozens of players around the globe served one purpose, lowering those 25 world record times by a combined total of less than one second. Super Smash Bros. Melee's single player modes, especially Break the Targets and Home Run Contest, have long, rich histories dating all the way back to the game's release in 2001. And while much of the early history has been lost, in some cases the history books are still being written today. In May 2002, six months after the game's release, the earliest surviving Break the Targets world record list reported that Melee's 25 individual levels had been completed in a total time of 3 minutes and 29.18 seconds. One year later, in May 2003, 22 of those records had been broken, and the total time had dropped to just under 3 minutes and 15 seconds, for 14 seconds of improvements. If you know anything about speedrunners, you know they love milestones, and break the target speedrunners are no exception. The dream was to have a total sum of high scores below 3 minutes. The next 14 seconds of improvements, however, took just a little bit longer. Okay, they took a lot longer. It took all the way to February of 2019, almost 16 years later, to get within striking distance of the 3 minute total. The sum was at 3 minutes and 0.87 seconds. But in the intervening years, Break the Target's records had been impressively optimized. No new records would come easily, so members of the community decided to sweeten the deal with a hefty bounty. Save State, who was then the holder of the Link World record, decided to put up $10 per frame for the 53 frames until the sum of high scores was at 259.99. Sockdude 1, the reigning king of Break the Targets with the lowest total time by a single individual, matched that. And Moody, in second place overall, put in 10 euros per frame. In total, as of the exchange rate on February 15, 2019, that's $31.30 for every 1 60th of a second shaved off a record. Or, put another way, $1,658.90 for less than a second of improvements. It sounds quite lucrative, and yet the reaction from most onlookers was, good luck. Like I said, no new records would come easily. Compounding this difficulty is the fact that break the target stages are very short, and Melee has been around for so long. Most stages have been so thoroughly researched that the current world records already use their optimal route, so they could only be improved with better execution. Nevertheless, the Break the Targets runners got to work. The first record to fall was one of the oldest in the books. 8.41 with Donkey Kong had been set 11 years prior by the legendary old school player LP Zampa, who set new untied records for 14 of Melee's characters between 2007 and 2009. Despite not being active since then, Zampa was still top 5 on the leaderboard at the end of 2019 over players who had the advantage of more than a decade of strategy improvements they could use to topple him. Zampa's DK record, set all the way back on November 3rd, 2007, had been recorded by a camera pointing at his TV and uploaded to YouTube years before the site supported 60fps video. This made it very difficult for players to analyze his run to determine how to save time, so a new record would be greatly appreciated. And only one tiny optimization was known, adding in a waveland after target 7 to potentially save a few frames on movement. After a few weeks of grinding, a player named Jerry3333 completed Donkey Kong stage a single frame faster than Zampa for an 8.40, breaking the previously untied record and claiming the first bounty frame on March 19, 2019. And while Zampa's record stood for 4,154 days, Jerry's lasted only one. 
He had been in a race with Sockdude for the first bounty frame saved, and both players used the same slightly improved strategy, so it was just down to who could execute it better. And while Jerry struck gold first, Sockdude got the last laugh. One day later, on March 20th, 2019, Sockdude shaved off another frame to 8.38, and that time still stands as the record. That's two frames down and already $62.60 handed out, though the amount of money actually changing hands was less than that as Sockdude did win some of his own money. You'll soon see that that's a pretty common theme. The second record to fall was another that had lasted over 11 years. In fact, Marth 1's Bowser 8.20 had been set merely four days after Zampa's Donkey Kong. Some runners had expected Bowser to be the first to fall, but none of them had started to work on it until after the DK record had already been broken. Much like DK, multiple runners turned their sights to Bowser around the same time, and after one week of friendly competition on April 10, Frenchman Chaos 6 became the third person to earn a bounty payout with an 8.18, also one frame faster than the old record. There was still time to save on Bowser's stage, and several players had started investigating Jigglypuff, Link, Young Link, and Pikachu. So it came as a huge surprise when none of those characters were the next to see a break. Canadian runner Sam the Digital popped into the Smash Stadium Discord merely one day after Bowser was broken with a very simple message. 5.45. His own Roy record had stood at 5.46 for two and a half years, and with the bounty, he found the motivation to grind until he knocked another frame off his time. Nobody expected to see two records broken in two days, but that's exactly what had just happened. Of course, three in three days would be even more unexpected, right? Well, hold on to your hats because, get this, Sam popped back in on the exact same day to announce that he had also knocked Luigi down a frame. That's right, two records broken by the same person in the same day one day after another record had been beaten. Luigi was set at 3.23 seconds by American runner Link Stark Arrows in 2014, and Sam tied that score before saving one frame for a 3.21. This time save is especially notable given the length of Luigi's course. Only Mr. Game & Watch breaks his 10 targets in a shorter time frame, and of the two, Luigi's is more optimized. The tool-assisted version of Luigi's run in which a player plays the game frame by frame to craft a theoretically perfect time is maxed out at 3.16 seconds, merely 3 frames 0.05 seconds faster than the real-time strategy. All the new records so far had something in common. They were all set by established Break the Targets players who had been playing for many years and had previously set world records. However, this streak was about to be broken. Young Link's stage is notable for how compressed its times are. There are a large number of people who have times that are just behind the world record. This is because 7 out of 10 targets are hit by boomerangs, which always travel at the same speed, so you only have movement and the remaining 3 targets to differentiate yourself from the competition. Thus, while being 7 frames behind the record is still world class on most stages, for some others, including Young Link, that's still not enough to get you into the top 10. Nonetheless, that's what two relatively newer players, Bobby and Mega Quartification, were going for. Breaking sub 5 on Young Link, which would put them within 7 frames of the record tie at 4.87. Mega was the first to sub 5, scoring a 4.99 in January 2019 before the bounty had started. It may come as a surprise to learn that he had only learned the strategy a week prior. After the bounty announcement, he came back to the stage and quickly dropped his personal best to 4.92. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but he was unsatisfied with his time, and after some more grinding, he shaved off three more frames to become the third member of the world record tie at 4.87. From there, he convinced himself that he could find one last frame and set a new record, but he hit a wall. So after a week off and with a little bit of inspiration from the three new records that had been set earlier that week, he sat down and got back to work. Then, more than three hours into his session, this happened. Finally, 4.85, a newly untied world record, and, most notably, it was set by a player that had never held a Break the Targets world record before. What an amazing feat in a field where veterans sometimes seem to have insurmountable advantages. One month later, Sam the Digital took two more frames off Bowser, knocking the record down to 8.15 seconds. For his trouble, Sam doubled his frame count to 4, 
and his bounty haul passed $125. Part of the issue with Bowser's stage is that the start is RNG. I have no idea what Melee's developers were thinking when they coded this, but each individual puff of Bowser's fire can travel at one of 65,536 distinct angles, all within the range of 35 to 55 degrees down. The player has no way to control it, so they have a choice to make. How far to the right do they want to move before attacking? Going further right increases the number of angles that will hit, and therefore the number of runs that can continue, giving you more chances for a good time at the cost of a few frames. Staying more left does the opposite, putting you more at the mercy of RNG for the chance at a better payoff after a good enough roll of the dice. Sam's record beat Chaos Sixes by two frames, and indeed, he was already two frames ahead at the slide off at 0.4 seconds. In other words, both runs broke the last nine targets in the exact same amount of time with the difference coming entirely at the start. And as a testament to the difficulty in overtaking these records, this was the sixth record broken and the first that beat its predecessor by more than 1 60th of a second. But it would definitely not be the last. When talk of breaking the sub three minute barrier started, Fox's stage was one that people saw a lot of potential for improvement on. The old record for the stage, 6.68 seconds, had been set also by LP Zampa back in 2008. Fox is a highly technical character, and his stage requires him to use every tool in his belt to complete it as quickly as possible. Unlike the other bounty records so far, Fox still had the potential to take a large chunk out of the bounty all by himself. The thing is though, improvements had actually started right before the bounty was set. In January and February 2019, three players had taken Zampa's time down a total of 10 frames. First Jerry with 6.67, then Moody with 6.62, and finally Sockdude with 6.52. The most notorious part of the stage is the large wall you need to climb after hitting the first three targets. The most efficient non-task way to get up there is with the jump, double jump, wall jump, and upward air dodge but the air dodge needs to be at a perfect angle in order to contact the ground as quickly as possible. But it's clearly not enough to be fast at the start. Of the three, Jerry's run actually was the fastest up the wall. The second place where it's easy to lose time is on this wall. You need to move to the right to clear the wall, then back to the left to trigger an incredibly finicky wall jump. Indeed, Moody went from three frames behind Jerry to three frames ahead solely on having a faster wall jump and he stayed three frames ahead the rest of the way. In his 6.52, Sockdude went from one frame behind Jerry to an absurd eight frames ahead, then gained another the rest of the way. Both sections still had potential for improvement, but despite this, it took until July 20th, 2019 for the record to be broken again. Moody took three frames off with a 6.46 thanks to a blisteringly fast wall jump, and yet he was still behind Jerry's 6.67 at the top of the wall. Unsatisfied with leaving an obvious time save on the table, Moody went back and finally got the start he wanted a few days later on July 25th, 2019. He landed above the wall one frame faster than Jerry, outpaced his own 6.46 by one frame the rest of the way, and ended up with a 6.40. When all was said and done, Moody cashed in his seven Fox frames to the tune of over $200, though a third of that was his own money. This nearly doubled the number of bounty frames paid out and brought the world record total down to 3 minutes and 0.62 seconds. Much like Fox, Samus' stage is another one that's difficult to be fast at, but had too much untapped potential to ignore. Several people in the Smash Stadium Discord started grinding Samus and a few even beat their personal best times, but nobody could topple the 7.87 that had been set by Link Stark Arrows back in 2010. Sockdude, who had actually tied that time in 2018, eventually decided to take another crack at it, starting on August 15th. Just two days later, after only about four hours of play, he got the untied world record with a 7.82. There's a reason why he's the king of break the targets. This particular record would only last a few months, but nonetheless, the three-frame save paid out almost $94. September passed without any new records, so an outside onlooker would have been forgiven for thinking that the remaining 35 bounty frames were going to take forever to be saved. But behind the scenes, two characters were being worked on, not just with the potential for frame improvements, 
but with the implementation of entirely new strategies, Jigglypuff and Pikachu. Both new strategies were well known but had never been accomplished in a world record run. Jigglypuff's involves a glitch where she squeezes between a wall and a moving block. As she gets squished from both sides, the block pushes her through the wall, potentially saving a large amount of time. This had been known to be possible since at least 2004, but even the current world record pace wasn't fast enough to get there in time. 7.62 set by Sockdude in 2015 was 5 frames too slow to the block, and Moody knew that he needed some strategy improvement to make up that time. Back in January, Moody had a run where he missed a few targets but got the push, and he hit the 10th target at 7.43. The block moves at a consistent timing, so if he could speed up the start of the run enough to make it there without missing targets, then the 7.43 ending would save a massive 11 frames. The exact same start wouldn't be enough, since whenever you hit a target you suffer a few freeze frames called hit lag, which increases as the strength of the hit increases. By missing targets, Moody had skipped freeze frames and unintentionally taken less time to get to the block. After months of testing all sorts of possibilities, Moody eventually decided to try a modified task strat, where he'd use Jigglypuff's down aerial instead of her neutral aerial to hit the first two targets. As down aerial is a very weak move, it hits the first two targets with a total of seven fewer hit lag frames than neutral aerial, but it puts Jigglypuff in a far more technically demanding position if she wants to maintain that lead. In March, Moody had started hitting the new start, and his pace quickly surpassed the old one, but he didn't have a completion yet. He took a few months off from Puff, but came back to her when bounty progress elsewhere seemed to have stalled. Finally, on October 6, 2019, this happened. Ready? Go! 12 frames, $375 in one shot. All of a sudden, Sub-3 didn't look that far away. But Moody wasn't done with Jigglypuff yet. On Bobby's recommendation, he implemented a reverse forward aerial during the block push to save a few more frames, and a week later he brought Jigglypuff down another 5 frames to 7.33. He was actually a frame slower to the push this time, but that was a good thing. It meant that Puff would stay in contact with the block for one additional frame, giving her a tiny extra push on top of the second strategy improvement. Jigglypuff's record used a strategy from 2004, and the next record would actually come from a player who had last set a record in 2004. Mario 64 Master had set a Samus record of 8.18 seconds in October of that year. A new Samus record had been set six times since then, including Sock Dude's recent 7.82, but Mario 64 Master came back to reclaim the throne and he did so in a scientific, methodical way unlike anyone I've ever seen in Break the Targets. He analyzed video footage of any fast Samus runs he could find, figured out who was fastest to which targets to determine where he could improve, and kept copious notes on even his partial runs that had good individual splits. Mario 64 Master put in roughly 100 hours into Samus alone over three months, at roughly twice his age the last time he had set a Break the Targets record and his tenacity eventually paid off. He took back the Samus record by 3 frames with a 7.77, then dropped it by one more to 7.75 in November, for a total payout of $125. Around the same time, he even broke the Samus Break the Targets task record, and joined Zampa's Mr. Game & Watch in the very rare club of players who held both the real-time and task records for the same character. With Samus down, there were only 14 bounty frames left, and everyone's eyes were on Pikachu, perhaps to even finish the job. But while the bounty was running, a YouTuber and Tasser named Practical Tats had been working on a video chronicling the history of Peach's Break the Targets, and it had a bit of a surprise at the end. A brand new world record, using a strategy that I had confirmed was faster than the existing. Sockdude pulled off a 9.46 with Peach, which beat the record by 4 frames and improved his personal best by nearly half a second. The massive gap came from the fact that it was his first ever non-tool assisted completion of Peach's beam sword strategy, which requires getting a 1 in 768 chance of pulling a beam sword instead of a turnip with Peach's down special. Sockdude had actually done this in early November, but he kept his time a secret so it could premiere in my video. 
I could go on about Peach forever. In fact, I already have, so if you want to learn more about her, the best place to learn is that video. And since the release of the Peach video, at least four more people have broken the 10 second barrier on her stage using the non-beam sword route that it describes. One of those players is also well known in the Legend of Zelda speedrunning community. His name is Demon. Before Demon was breaking records in the Legend of Zelda series, he was actually a prolific melee single player runner. At one time or another from 2007 to 2013, Demon had set Break the Target's records for 8 characters, one of which still stood all the way through the end of 2019. Pikachu. He hit 7.20 on January 1st, 2010, and much like Moody with Jigglypuff, he took inspiration from the TAS route to finally crack that record. The 6.68 TAS uses an absurdly precise up B angle which required holding the control stick at a specific diagonal coordinate. And to make matters worse, that coordinate is in the middle of the control stick's range rather than on the edge, so you can't use a notch for consistency. Bobby had actually hit it several times starting in March, but it wasn't considered reliable at all. The concept is actually pretty similar to that of an extended super slide in Ocarina of Time, so it's pretty fitting that a Legend of Zelda speedrunner figured out how to make it work in Melee. After testing, Demon figured out that the up B could be more consistent if Pikachu traveled diagonal first, then sideways. This meant that the precise coordinate is needed during the straight sideways movement instead of the diagonal, and Melee's generous controller dead zone meant that the runner only needed to worry about precision on one axis instead of both. After several close calls, Demon completed the new strategy for a 7.35 with several clear areas to save time. The new route was clearly faster when done optimally, so now that there was a completion, it was only a matter of time before a new record would be set. The race was on and over $300 were at stake. There were 10 bounty frames left, and this new Pikachu strat could easily take home all of them. Or as Link's Dark Arrows perhaps exaggerated, one meh run with Pikachu makes 259 free. A 703 would be a 10 frame improvement, and sub 7 was definitely possible. Even top melee competitors joined the fray, including the best Pikachu, Axe, and the recently retired former number one player, Armada. First Blood was soon struck. On January 1st, 2020, Demon sent a very simple message to the Smash Stadium Discord. Hey, and a YouTube link. It didn't end the bounty, in fact it was only a one frame improvement to 7.18 seconds. But it was a new record, beating Demon's old time exactly 10 years to the day that he said it. And one day later, Demon beat his time again, scoring a 7.10 for another 5 frames of improvement. Demon was up to almost $188 in bounty money and had brought the total high score to within striking distance of sub 3 minutes. 3 minutes and 0.05 seconds, merely 4 frames from the magical 259.99. That very same day, January 2nd, 2020, sub 3 was finally achieved. But it wouldn't be Demon who did it. Ready? Yes! Oh my god! Who else could it have been but Moody? He had already earned 24 of the first 49 bounty frames, and with his blistering 6.97 second Pikachu run, he cleaned out the last four with room to spare. Most of his time save relative to Demon was at the edge cancel. While he was only one frame ahead of Demon going into it, Demon had an 8 frame wait before he input a jump, while Moody was merely 2 frames slower than optimal. Moody had been practicing with the save state to get the muscle memory for the edge cancel down, and while the extra time spent practicing meant that Demon took the majority of the remaining bounty frames, Moody walked away with the glory of being the person who took the total below 3 minutes for good, and another $125. Because he was responsible for a total of 28 bounty frames, he actually came out net positive on the bounty despite paying out roughly 36% of it, before accounting for fluctuating exchange rates. In total, he committed 530 euros to the cause, or roughly $600 at the start of the bounty, and he received about $875 to walk away a remarkable 275 bucks up. You might be tempted to think that the story ends there, right? Well, you're wrong. The crazy part is, the Break the Targets runners are still going. Several of the records in this video have already been beaten, 
Breaking the three minute barrier only increased the amount of interest in break the targets. In fact, we didn't just go sub three in 2020. We didn't even just go sub 259 in 2020. We actually went all the way down to sub 258 in under 12 months, then sub 257 in the first half of 2021. This included a brand new strategy on the ice climbers stage that, had it been discovered a year earlier, could have cleaned out the entire bounty fund and then some in four days. But that's a story for another time. So if you want to know the exact second when my next video goes live, you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching and a very special thank you to all the members of the Smash Stadium Discord. This video could not have happened without your help.